This week I want to share with you why, as a private investigator, you need a fake brother-in-law. Hi, Larry Kay, ShadowAnyone.com, and the creator of the Investigator's Ultimate Guide series, premium private investigator training from someone who's been there and done that. Why do you need a fake brother-in-law? Because when we're doing pretext, when we're posing as someone else, or maybe even, I would say going undercover might be a way to say it sometimes, we're not going to know everything that we need to know for that industry or that specialty. And maybe taking the time to learn everything is, is too much of a burden. And what if you miss something? Uh, you know, every industry, every profession, everything has its language and its way of speaking. Think of sports, think of manufacturing, even in the private investigation world. You know, if I get a call from somebody and they say they're a private investigator, I can tell pretty quickly if they don't know what they're talking about. And even if they drop some of the buzzwords, even if they say something about skip trace or something like that, very quickly you can tell who's a player and who's not. So when you're posing as someone else for, say, a pretext, how do you avoid putting your foot in your mouth or showing them that you really don't know what you're talking about? Well, the easy answer is having a fake brother-in-law. Now, what I do, uh, and, and I'll tell you, I got a really good example of this. I have a video that I posted, uh, uh, our verbal contracts binding and what a private investigator can do about it. It's one of my most overlooked videos because my fault it's not you know titled very well it's not very glamorous uh who cares about verbal contracts you don't until you need to find out and there's that resource for you i'll put a link in the description to that video because here's the thing that's in that video that nobody knows unless they watch it is there's a, a very interesting case study of a time i had to go uh, work a case and in that particular case i had to go into a manufacturing facility which i have no idea about any of this stuff but my cover was that I have this brother-in-law who lays around on the couch and thinks he's all great and wants to borrow money from me for this investment. And I'm not loaning him a dime until I see firsthand. Now look at the beauty of this, uh, at, at the beauty of this type of pretext. The person that I'm pretexting knows there's money to be had and I'm the money guy. My brother-in-law is the one that turned me on to it. But he's got to sell me, the, the, the guy I'm pretexting has got to sell me on giving up my money. This guy took me all through the manufacturing facility, showed me everything there was, all the contracts and everything. Gave me the grand tour because he thought he could get money out of me. But the fake brother-in-law angle is very important. Because if I had posed as someone who knows what they're doing as an investor, I would have stepped in it. He would have known right away, I don't know this industry. But by saying... My brother-in-law is the one who knows, or my brother-in-law is the one that thinks this is a good idea. Now it puts me in a position where the guy I'm pretexting has to educate me and teach me and talk. And the more they talk, the deeper they dig the hole, you know, if they're a bad guy. And that's the case there. So you might want to check out that video, uh, uh, Our Verbal Contracts Binding. And uh, you can go over to shadowanyone.com and just do a keyword search for contracts. And it's one of the one of the top uh, videos and blog posts that will show up. Or hopefully uh, you can find it here in the description uh, right here at this video. This is Larry K. ShadowAnyone.com. Remember, do the right thing, even if it's the hard thing.